Hi everyone, it is January 6, 2018. I want to thank my subscriber for sending along this article to me. Very upsetting, but as I go through the articles, we are all in this together, regardless of the nation that we are citizens in. It doesn't matter if we are American, Scottish, English, Irish, French, Australian does not matter. We have the same sick stuff going on in all of our countries. And, well, as I read these articles, a lot of it is kind of mm, United States driven. Kangaroos are dying in the millions in, in um, New South Wales. Australia. Mysterious illness. Yes, your experts in Australia are just like our experts here. They can't figure anything out. Mysterious illness has been killing millions of kangaroos, which have left experts scratching their heads. Red and gray varieties of kangaroos have died as a result of massive hemorrhaging, and internal bleeding around the joints, whole family sitting there, but they were all dead. It's not a genetic problem. It's not a bacteria. It's not a virus. It's not parasites. Can't simply be due to culling rates. The harvesting from meat, the market is low. It can't be starvation. It can't be malnutrition. And yet, You've had a subs no, a huge drop in the number of kangaroos from 2016 to 2017. The grays dropped to 3.85 million from 6.33 million. Reds dropped by 1.2 million to 5.13 million. Any disease that can claim 40% in the population, yeah, it's worth understanding? I would say so. Absolutely. Could something be in the water? I looked for other articles to perhaps get a little bit more details on what's going on with the kangaroos. Mystery kangaroo killer leaves experts baffled. Experts are baffled. Massive hemorrhaging, total or partial blindness, internal bleeding around the joints, stilted movement and inflammation. That's what they got. So there's a substantial drop right across the western plains, but the Griffith zone in the southeast, there doesn't seem to be a drop. Interesting, to say the least. So, my subscribers, you guys in Australia, do you know these areas? Are these areas significant for a reason? In 1997 and 1998, more than a million red kangaroos died inexplicably after a season of good rain. Oh, so this has happened before. It's actually happened several times. In 2010, kangaroo harvesters reported dead animals in northwest New South Wales and southwest Queensland. The results of blood tests from the kangaroos not consistent with any disease. What's going on here? Yet, you also have suspected illness in other animals. The Tasmanian devil dropped 90% since 1996 due to a facial tumor disease. And koalas increasingly suffer a strain of chlamydia. Hmm. What is going on here? So, um, 
mystery rue deaths in far west New South Wales baffle authorities. So I figured that this was just a continuation of the articles that I uh, read off of. But wait, this is December 2016. Oh, all right. These articles are from December 2017. So this happened last year. Hundreds of kangaroos found dead in far west New South Wales from what has been described as a mysterious disease. Wow. So this disease has actually been going on since, well, 1997. In 2016, the animals appear disoriented. They're not running off the road, but towards vehicles. And kangaroos and paddocks, paddocks are finding it difficult to move, even though they're in good condition. Mass mystery die-offs in previous seasons, when it was estimated hundreds of thousands of roos within a two-week period. What is going on? We've got some understanding of the pathology, but we don't know what the agent is. It's not a plant poisoning. It's certainly not starvation. It's possible it's an infectious disease process, but so far we haven't been able to pinpoint that. So if it's not genetics and not starvation and not, 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 but they haven't been able to find a disease, well, considering the numbers in which these kangaroos are dying, one would think it is an infectious disease. And yet, none of the agencies responsible for investigating have been able to or have been prepared to investigate what's going on with these animals. <laughs> Sounds like your agencies are very similar to our agencies. More attention should be given to the deaths as the implications are concerning, not just for the kangaroo meat industry, but the meat industry in general. Yeah, because you know what? They haven't only found kangaroos dying, but livestock as well. Um, given that kangaroos are used for meat, it's important to understand what's going on with these animals. Oh, yeah. Um, and I don't mean to be sarcastic to the man who's saying this. This is a man who is, <laughs> we've got to get on this. We have to, we have to figure out what's, what is going on here. Predators stay clear of the dead roos. Add to the mystery. There were no younger roos. They were roos that were in good condition and no wounds on them whatsoever. So a week later, no pigs got at them, wedgies, crows, black-tipped kites that normally get into you know, the dead animals. Nothing had been eating them. Okay. This is quite a mystery. So back in 2010, until samples are actually collected from the field and a full investigation is done. It's really just speculation. It's 2017. In 2010, the department that was uh, supposed to be investigating these deaths, well, a spokesman for the, <laughs> the, uh, the agency said, it appears the deaths have ceased. So since there's been no more reports of deaths. The investigation is on hold. Well, it sounds to me like they're deliberately not investigating because they may know what the cause is. But I come across this. February of 2017, Australia to cull more than a million kangaroos this year. So, it's a mystery, 
it's a mystery why there was a drop in the gray kangaroos, nearly a three million drop in one year, and the reds dropped 1.5 million. And yet, the Australian government had already determined or decided that they would kill a million kangaroos in Australia in a mass call. Wildlife groups were upset. They criticized the plans and warned that the illegal killing of the creatures by farmers and hunters combined with the government-sanctioned call could see the numbers rapidly deplete. Well, they did rapidly deplete. The wildlife groups fear that kangaroos could soon become extinct if the level of culling continues. If you take into account the numbers of kangaroos shot each year, the numbers hit and killed by cars, it's running into millions and millions per year. So why is this a mystery? how they died. If the government announces that they're going to cull, cull the kangaroo and then you have all these experts coming out and claiming it's a mystery, we don't know what's going on, uh, it, it's not genetics, it's not bacteria, it's not a virus, it's not starvation, it's not this, it's not that, we just don't know what it is. And then the agencies Responsible for investigating these deaths? Well, that was years ago, but they don't seem to be all that eager to find out. Perhaps the backlash from the public, the, the Australian government is just not going to say, hey, we killed them, or is something else going on? And they are covering up the reason why. There are rescues rescue groups that care for the young when the mothers get hit by cars or shot dead. And yeah, I'm going to read this because it really, it, it's just illustrative of how sick humans are. When they shoot a kangaroo, they either leave the joey in the pouch to die, where it will eventually starve, freeze, cook, or get eaten by some predator, or they just grab the animal by the ankles and smash its head on a rock or a tree. That's what they consider to be a humane way to kill a joey, blunt force trauma to the head. 60% of joeys born in Australia today do not reach adulthood. With most deaths caused by human actions, official statistics show that more than one and a half million kangaroos were killed in 2015. The figures when this article was posted for 2016, they were not available. But yeah, of course, the numbers, no doubt, are much, much higher. Oof, boy. So, just want to point out that Australia, your government has allowed the United States, the French, the UK militaries to do so much testing in your country. U.S. chemical and biological warfare tests in the Pacific and Australia. And an article that I read the U.S. military was conducting uh, tests to induce earthquakes. This was in the 60s and 70s. They were simulating meteorites over Australia. And what did we want to do? Now, this, this information was released due to a, the equivalent of a FOIA request. And what was found was that the American military 
proposed to test nerve gas in Australia during the 60s by dropping it on soldiers in a remote Queensland rainforest. 200 mainly Australian combat troops to be aerial bombed and sprayed with the chemical weapons. <laughs> with all but a few to be kept in the dark. Well, that's how that's how militaries around the world roll, but wow, man, our military I have a I have this thing inside me that wants to apologize. The original request came from Robert McNamara in, in uh, 1962. And 1964, a cable from the Australian Embassy in Washington detailing to the Australian government what the U.S. wanted to do with nerve gas testing in Australia, including the two cover stories which would be told to the Australian public to cover up the real nature of the tests. And here, in... Uh, the Australian Defense Minister I guess back in 1966 said if anything like that had ever been put to me as Army Minister I would not only have said no I also would have queried with the American President what the hell are your people doing well, too bad we didn't have enough people saying, what the hell are your people doing? All right. Um, oh, wait. Documents show U.S. military is the top funder of controversial gene extinction technology used for wiping out pests. Hmm. I've heard that kangaroos from other Australians that they're a pest, that they're a real nuisance. So genetic engineering technology extends far beyond food with uses ranging from medicine to creating novel species of animals and everything in between. Gene drives a process which has also been dubbed genetic extinction technology for its ability to potentially wipe out large numbers or perhaps even entire species of pests, such as malaria-carrying mosquitoes. Well, uh, it's not just mosquitoes. Uh, possible un unintended consequences of this immensely powerful technology. The United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity is now debating whether or not to impose a moratorium on the gene research next year. And where where are they going to be conducting some of this? Australia, New Zealand. These tests. Predator Free 2050. New Zealand Land Care Research. Monsanto, DuPont, The Gates, Melinda and Bill, The Rockefellers, and DARPA. Well, need you say more? No. I got it. So, this woman is posting on this Predator Free 2050 agenda. Uh, files reveal how far along the two leading gene drive teams target malaria for the U from the UK and G-Bird, which is based in North Carolina, have proceeded towards building gene drive organisms and are preparing for open field trials, including steps to select test sites in Australia, New Zealand, Burkina Faso, Uganda, Mali, Ghana, and to create government and community acceptance of the use of gene drives in gene testing sites. Well, um, predator-free New Zealand for years. New Zealand 
has been getting rid of its pests. Rats. I would talk about the environment being 100% controlled by man. And several islands in the largest pest eradication operation yet undertaken in New Zealand. There were blitz with rat poison in the winter of 2001. Another island blitzed of pets. And this, I'll link below to everything, Australia and New Zealand to be test sites for genetically modified insect trials courtesy of DARPA. Now, just because we're hearing about this now, don't you think that they could have already conducted tests and the public didn't even know? And perhaps that's one of the reasons why the Tasmanian devil population is down 90%. Kangaroos are dying in the millions. So this person here obviously I guess from Australia writes no sites in the US obviously after all if there are any unexpected consequences of releasing genetically modified altered insects in the environment better do it well away from America could somebody please inform this Aussie <laughs> that we are like a major test site here They've already released genetically modified mosquitoes. And my God, any consequences to the environment? I guess this guy really is not very well informed about what's going on here with all of the toxins that we are now saturated in. But yes, there is a public relations package aimed to create government and community acceptance, the main funder of gene drive technology is DARPA with virtually unlimited funding uh, from DARPA and Bill Gates, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, well, they're really behind the PR spin. The PR spin, emerging ag, ag that's Bill and Melinda Gates. That's their public relations firm. And they already have researchers and scientists and, you know, people on the United Nations, you know, the Biodiversity Commission. It's going through. It's Australia, New Zealand. You're going to get it. But the spin, controlling mosquito diseases. But the other not mentioned benefits will be to try to develop a Monsanto pesticide resistant bee, which will be used to pollinate crops sprayed with the chemicals without dying. The genetically modified bee is programmed with a terminator gene, which will ensure that the genetically modified bees die off without leaving any offspring. So each year farmers have to purchase a new batch of genetically modified bees if they want to have pollinating dependent crop. And such a development would go a long way to assure global U.S. military and corporate dominance over the world's food resources. What is the logic here? Why remove a profitable chemical which happens to be killing bees and other pollinating insects when you can change nature itself? at a huge profit, but with an unknown long-term cost for humanity. And there's an awful lot of information about this gene drive right here. Gene drives are, and this is a quote from a scientist. Gene drives are a powerful and dangerous new technology and potential biological weapon weapons that could have disastrous impacts on peace, food, security, and the environment, especially if misused.
the fact that gene drive development is now being primarily funded and structured by the U.S. military raises alarming questions about this entire field. Mosquitoes containing gene drives are being proposed for malaria in Africa, malaria control, and of course they claim potential health benefits, but releasing risky genetically modified organisms into the environments of these African countries is outrageous and deeply, deeply worrying. And that is from the executive director of the African Center for Biodiversity. So, Emerging Ag, a privately held public relations firm, they received over 1.6 million from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Well, maybe what I should have said earlier was that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they give over this money and then they're bought and sold. So two classified studies on genome editing and gene drives at the request of the U.S. government. That's what's going to be going on here. And the gene drive study, which includes input by a Monsanto executive focuses on hostile use of gene drives and use of gene drives in agriculture and based on some of the research that I did on these gene drives it looks like what they are doing with these genetically modified insects they alter the genes of those infected. So I think it's similar to this. Genetically modified wheat may damage human genetics permanently. And I'm going to be doing a, a video on this. I will link below if you want to get a head start. But this was back in 2012. And I think the public got this stopped. But you can't guarantee it, guys. The Australian government, in the form of its science research arm, is joining agribusiness, profiteering, profiteering by designing a genetically modified wheat that could kill people who eat it and be inherited by their children. We have not yet seen the worst damage that genetic engineering may do. The Australian Government's Agency, Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization, is developing a wheat species that is engineered to turn off genes permanently. So what we have found is that molecules created in this wheat, intended to silence wheat genes, can match human genes, and through ingestion, these molecules can enter human beings and potentially silence our genes. If this silences the same gene in us that it silences in the wheat, and um, scientists have said that yes, both genes are pretty similar, that would mean that children who are born with this enzyme not working tend to die by the age of about five. So the younger roos are still alive, and they're seeing the older roos dead. Silencing the equivalent gene in humans that is silenced in this genetically modified wheat holds the potential for killing people. But it gets worse. Silenced genes are permanently silenced and can be passed down through generations. It's a novel RNA molecule, and could they have done more testing and somehow these kangaroos had eaten foods that had this uh, RNA molecule? Perhaps. Perhaps. There's no question that this can transfer to humans by eating it and you can't kill it. You can't kill it. Cooking doesn't kill it. Processed foods, you know, the processing doesn't kill it. So we ingest it.
it's uh, the two genes, the wheat gene and the human gene. They're a perfect match. The specific sequence that's modified is classified confidential information, of course, so we can't know for sure what will happen. But shutting down a section of the GBE gene holds the potential of death, and it's not just only possible, it's likely. So the Australian government appears to have become nothing more than another agribusiness corporate entity. They're using the people's money to fund a massive profit-making venture in genetic engineering without any consideration for the potential harm that may be done to either the environment or the welfare of the people. Not only are they willing to risk mass deaths from products they're hoping to put on the market, they also seem to have no concern for whether they might be doing permanent damage to generations that follow. And, well, you've had mass die-offs of kangaroos, 1997-1998. And remember, I'm sorry, you guys, Australia, you've been a test site for corporations and the U.S. government. 1997, Monsanto ro rolls out its genetic, genetically modified organisms. Rolled it out fast here in the United States. 1997-1998, you have a mass die-off of kangaroos. That's what you know. And then again in 2010. Then again in 2016. Now again in 2017. So who knows? They could have been already testing this. So we're all in this together. All links are below.